Bill, I want to thank you for having us here to your processing facility to learn more about Taylor Shellfish and your position out here in the Pacific Northwest. Could you give us a little more information about the history? Sure. Uh, my family has been involved here in the Pacific Northwest since about 1890, farming shellfish. The industry is started about that time, um, and, uh, and my family has been involved uh, uh, from then till now. Um, we've had to make a number of changes over the years, adapt to environmental conditions, uh, uh, pollution conditions, uh, market conditions, a variety of different things. When he came here, there was an oyster fishery that was rapidly in decline, and yet there was a strong market. And so they were looking for ways to uh, produce the oysters and work, learned how to farm the oyster. And it took them some time, but they developed a system that, was, that worked for growing the a native Olympia oyster here. That is something that so many people don't grasp, is that you all aren't actually oyster fishermen, you all are really farmers, you're shellfish farmers. We have a piece of uh, tide lands that we uh, uh, purchase or lease and um, we work that same tide lands, a lot of those same tide lands we've been working for this last 120 years. We're tied to that piece of property um, and we have to, to regenerate those crops, we have to actually farm them so they don't just appear there uh, naturally. You all have encouraged other people to farm as well, haven't you? Yeah, we've worked, worked very hard with the industry on a number of different uh, issues. Um, some we, we sell seed to a lot of the other industry folks. The industry is very cohesive because of a number of uh, problems we face jointly as an industry over the 120 years. And so um, we, we have a pretty very strong community um, amongst the shellfish uh, farming farmers here in the Northwest. And what I love is that it's not just about the professional shellfish farmer, you encourage the amateur shellfish farmer, don't you? That's correct. We um, sell seed um, to a lot of local uh, Tideland owners that all they want to do is just have a few uh, uh, clams or oysters for their um, family and encourage them to grow the shellfish on their beach. It helps us in a number of ways. One is um, it, what we're, our biggest concern is water quality. And we figure if we can get more people growing shellfish and being concerned about the water quality in their backyard, that um, it's gonna help us in our um, drive to maintain the water quality or help to improve the water quality in the areas where we grow shellfish. I so. love the way that translates, that it actually goes from farming to gardening. I love that term, shellfish garden. I, I, I wish I had one at home. <laughs> you have empowered everybody to be what you refer to as an ECOP. Tell us about your ECOP program. Sure, the ECOP is an environmental code of practice. Um, the, uh, we saw this these starting to be developed in other countries around the world and decided that this was something that would be appropriate for uh, us, it's a, for our company. We wanted a way to um, speak to our employees about what our expectations were out on the farms, on how what our environmental footprint is out on the farms. Um, also, it's a way to communicate that um, to regulators and to the public. Um, and this is what you know. These are our practices, and, and this is how the effects the effects that they potentially have on the environment. And we sit down on a monthly basis with our crews and go over um, here's different practices that we um, don't want to do or practices that we do want to do. It encourage. goes hand in hand with your safety program, That's right? That's correct, yes. We merge the two together because they're both extremely important to us, both the health and welfare of our employees but also the health and welfare of the environment. I am very captivated at what great community citizens you all are. We're in a kind of a unique business and to try to educate the, the homeowner as to what we're doing and the community and, and uh, larger, uh, the larger community as to what we're doing is important so that they understand why we're out there in the middle of the night, um, why we 
are putting shells on the beach, um, why, just a number of our different activities. I'm amazed at your reuse of the shells. If you could tell us a little bit about that process. Sure. We reuse our oyster shell. We shuck the oysters and then we season it and for a couple of years and that's why you see the large piles. Uh, we take that shell then and reuse it um, by catching oyster uh, spat on it. Um, so we get our, that's where we get our oyster, or one of our sources of oyster seed. And um, it's a good material for the oyster seed likes attaching to that shell. And so we've, we use it in that way. We also use it to help enhance some of our beds, to help improve them and make them better quality beds. I know that you all use a great deal of water, but that you're also very conscious of your stewardship with the watershed. We end up, like you say, using a lot of water. We're fortunate that we have forest land adjacent to our uh, plant here, and um, we take that reuse or that water, and we take and uh, sprinkle it out over our uh, forest lands and uh, help help grow our uh, trees faster. And it seems to be work well, and the water then gets back into the uh, into the watershed and goes into the aquifer again. What happens on the beach is aesthetically pleasing. You know, a shellfish farm is as beautiful as a cornfield to me. I I think it's just grand.